Thank you so much, Dee. Yes, so earlier this week, MPs in Ottawa held the first ever session online. And today, Toronto City Council is going to give that one a shot for the first time, holding today's meeting online, virtually, in the face of this COVID crisis to get to some very pressing business to be taken care of. As he does each week, Mayor John Tory joins us live via Skype uh, to talk about all of that and more. Good morning to you, Mayor. Good morning, Mel. Okay, so the council meeting, which uh, there's going to be a, lies on, a lot of eyes on it, and hopefully a lot of people using that mute button properly because we saw what happened at the yeah. federal level. Um, <laughs> what, are, what is the number one priority for this meeting today? Well, I guess the number one priority in terms of new business, as it were, is the approval of this modular housing thing, which I think is very exciting for Toronto. It's like a Lego set. It's been used in Vancouver to provide housing almost immediately. People could be living in it by September, and it will be manufactured over the summer. But I think in terms of the general purpose of the meeting, it's really to have some accountability. I've had this extraordinary emergency power for about a month now, and the law requires that we have a meeting to review that and how it was exercised and to... Uh, continue with it uh, and uh, to continue with the bylaw that deals with how people uh, conduct themselves in public parks in terms of physical spacing. So it really is about that accountability, having the council brought up to date on what has happened, uh, having hearing their comments and questions about all of that. I think that's a fundamentally important uh, thing at a time when we are facing as a city an emergency and when there have been extraordinary declarations of emergency uh, made by me as the mayor under the law. Indeed, you've still been keeping in contact with various councillors, so it's not like that communication has been cut off. But when it comes to this state of emergency, again, I ask you every single time for a timeline. I know you can't provide me a specific date, but do you see any sort of end in sight, at least when it comes to some services? Well, I think, first of all, the state of emergency will uh, will uh, be prolonged for as long as the council permits it to, because I've decided rather than declaring it myself, I would put it in front of the council. And I think they will recognize the need for continued flexibility and ability to move quickly on the part of uh, the city government with respect to sort of the so-called light at the end of the tunnel. I can only say to you that I think the numbers are improving. If you separate out uh, long-term care, where we've had a particularly acute problem in a provincially regulated sector, uh, and, and the rest of the community transmission, there is still transmission of this virus taking place in the community. So it means we have to carry on with our uh, physical uh, separation, physical distancing efforts. But I think there's enough progress that we can see that it's time for us to do as we are doing, uh, to, to do the plans, make the plans necessary to reopen. We're working very hard at that with the province, uh, with a view to as soon as possible getting life back to normal, a uh, normal in quotation marks, because mm -hmm. I think normal is going to be different uh, than it was before. Very different. We are looking at the calendar. It is April 30th. That means tomorrow, May 1st, a lot of people looking ahead to how am I going to make ends meet when it comes to rent? Uh, what has the city done lately? Well, the city has no jurisdiction to deal with, uh, you know, with people and their rent issues. The landlord and tenant issues are the exclusive uh, domain of the province under our constitution. And so what we've done is we've certainly made arrangements to be accommodating to our own tenants because we have some 100,000 uh, tenants uh, in Toronto community housing. But beyond that, what I've, I've done is about, I've been an advocate. I commend the province for the fact they banned evictions, but I think there's more that might be done. And I certainly think there is no excuse whatsoever, zero. And I'm a free enterpriser. I understand landlords have their obligations to meet as well, but there is no excuse whatsoever for landlords, any of them, big or small, not being able to reach some reasonable accommodation, say, for example, to take the May rent if people are having trouble paying it because they've lost their job and spread that out over the rest of the lease so that people don't have to make that May payment. And I'm hopeful that, of course, if they don't have to make the May payment, by the time we get to June, we'll be much closer to the day when people are back at work, or maybe some of them will, in fact, be back at work. We'll have to see. But uh, I just think there's no reason why pragmatism, you know, uh, if, frankly, I mean, these are the customers of the landlords. And generally, you try and treat your customers well, including when they're having trouble. And I think they can do that without hurting themselves, the landlords, and I trust many of them are doing it. But I don't have any power to do anything uh, as mayor or the city council doesn't beyond that vis-a-vis -vis the relationship between landlords and tenants and who pays rent and who doesn't. While we're talking about housing, uh, an initiative by the city to uh, get those encampments, get those who have been living in those encampments. We know that the shelter system has had a number of issues when it comes to the spread of COVID-19 and getting them into temporary housing. How long can this temporary housing last? What is the plan? Well, the temporary housing we've made have made available by a company called the Times Group, and I thank them for their uh, civic mindedness, uh, is going to be available to us for quite a few months. And the bottom line is it allows us to get people. We have 125 units uh, in the Midtown, and it allows us to get people out of the encampments, and we will then take those encampments down, uh, out of those encampments and into housing uh, where, you know, they will be supported. 
But the encampments have huge public safety issues with them in terms of propane tanks and, and fire safety and those kinds of things. And now, increasingly, huge public health uh, problems with uh, physical distancing, among other things, uh, where the virus could spread in those kinds of encampments. So people will be offered that housing. Some have moved into it already or are about to momentarily. Uh, and when they have moved out of, that, uh, out of those encampment settings, those encampments will be taken down. Uh, I want to get to Jesse Ketchum Child Care because a lot of people have questions. Uh, of course, this is one of seven locations for essential workers' children. Uh, I know the deep clean is happening and the investigation is ongoing as to what went wrong, how this could have spread, because I know there were some stringent uh, practices put into place, or at least there should have been. Do you have the latest when it comes to an update on maybe how this was spread or, or moving forward, how this could potentially reopen and what might change when it does reopen? Well, uh, we're looking right now, and the purpose of the investigation uh, being done by public health and others is to determine how this happened. But, you know, you have to remember at the same time, there have been outbreaks in Sick Children's Hospital where they have the most stringent policies ever. Uh, you know, you've seen it in Toronto Public Health's own office where they had a number of people, staff people, unfortunately, came down with this. So this is a virus we still don't know as much about as we might compared to some other medical conditions. And so uh, what we're doing is taking a look at what were incredibly stringent conditions, as you said, on those uh, child care centres, as you would expect, uh, and trying to make them even more stringent, uh, whatever we can do. And that investigation is ongoing, and it will produce perhaps some recommendations. And I can assure you, that in the interest of those children, who are the children of our essential service workers, we will implement those recommendations immediately, uh, it, whatever they may be. And, Mayor, when we talk about these essential workers, do you have a breakdown of who they are? Are they health care workers? Are they transit workers? Uh, or is it a mix of all of them? It's a mix of all of them. And in fact, as you may have seen, the province expanded the definition of essential service workers and thus made other uh, children of other workers uh, uh, eligible for this child care yesterday. So it now includes people like grocery store workers, certain kinds of truck drivers and so on, because these are people who've had to stay on the job no matter what. And oftentimes their child care arrangements, often provided by us or by other private operators, are closed by government orders. So that's why we moved uh, uniquely as a city in North America. I think we were the first city, maybe one of the only ones that has a network of emergency see child care like this 24 7 for people who have to go to work but who by a, a government order from another government have lost their own child care and so uh, we stepped in to provide for those people to make sure they could continue to come and do their hard work for us yeah and very quickly i think we have just a little bit of time i want to ask you how uh, it's going when it comes to the the curb uh, being closed off on a number of hot spots across the city uh, i know our roger peterson's very invested in this one and he has a lot of questions when it comes to What's being done to ensure that physical distancing on a number of sidewalks and hotspots across the city? How is it going so far and have more spots been identified? It's going fine and the public have helped us. The very first suggestions came in and the first two that came in and that are at the top of the list were from an appearance I made right here on BT. Uh, one of them being the Loblaws store, I remember, at, uh, at uh, Carlton and Church and another one out on uh, Gerard Street in, uh, in, in Little India there. And so that came from BT viewers and we would tell people, we want them to tell us about other hotspots uh, through 311. Uh, but it's going fine and I think it is a common sense solution as opposed to uh, what has been pushed uh, at the city uh, all the way through this week which is just randomly closing down all kinds of streets. And we're not doing that. We are, uh, in fact, uh, closing uh, streets down in a common sense fashion, closing lanes down and, and making for sidewalk accommodation where uh, the congestion actually requires it. And I think that's the sensible thing to do for now with no, uh, you know, no, no uh, ruling out of things that might happen in the future as part of the reopening of the city. And that beeping was actually my reminder to pay for my parking. So uh, we'll leave it no, there. No, no, to get rid of me. I Come on, you don't have to be polite to me. It's, um, it's time to give Tori the hook. <laughs> Mayor Tori, always appreciate your time. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mel.